So good morning and welcome to our worship for Sunday the 4th of October um, with Greenway Benefis, so Badgeworth, Sherdington and Wickham with Bentham. All my words are on the screen, this is so nice. <laughs> so let's take a moment to um, settle ourselves uh, into the presence of God. So join with me in uh, the bits in bold on the screen, or all the bits if you normally join in with all of them. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. Well, just to keep a short silence. As God's people we have gathered. Let us worship God now together across the miles yet joined. So let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a sneezy husband here who just managed not to sneeze right in the middle of the prayer. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. So we'll keep a moment of quiet while we think about the things that we want to um, put in the light of Christ uh, this morning. So thinking about those things that we want to bring before God, let's say together the confession. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. So we come to the um, Gospel reading. The text is dominating the screen. Yes, it is. You should just be able to see a little bit of me and plenty of text so that you can read it. That's the theory. I could put more of me on, but then you won't be able to see the text so very well. OK, so we come to the Gospel reading. Um, and Phil's going to read that for us. So, over to you. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at verse 33. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Now, when the owner of the vineyard Oh, Jesus. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures, the stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. And it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, 
The kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Thank you. I'm just going to um, stop the screen share now so that I can speak to you with the sermon and then I'll go back into it after that. Actually, maybe I can just make me bigger. Yeah, I'll stop the share. Okay, so you should be able to see a big picture of me now. So I have uh, preached on this reading quite a few times uh, and it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the main bit about um, the kingdom of heaven and uh, Jesus is telling people what will happen to him as the son um, when he will be killed, rejected. So, but today I thought we'd talk about something completely different. I've just realised I need to screen share because I've got some pictures to show you. Um, so, let me just go back to that. Sorry, I forgot that I want to show you some pictures. You don't usually get pictures, do you, in the sermon? No. There. Okay. I've got a picture to show you in a moment. So stones and cornerstones, if you heard that part of the reading. I wonder if you've ever wondered about stones. They're significant, important, and they come in many shapes and sizes. And some are useful. Um, and some are not, some are just for fun. So for example, a skimming stone, you know, the ones that you just skim out and they create ripples, temporary ripples, and then they sink out of sight. And then you have a rolling stone, not the musical type, but the type that gathers no moss. Or how about a stepping stone, something that helps you to cross a river or a stream, but they can be slippery and sometimes you might fall into the water. Or a philosopher's stone. Okay, so that one is an invention of uh, J.K. Rowling. Or a memorial stone. As we approach our season of remembering, those stones might come to mind. A variety of stones. And then in our reading, the cornerstone. This is an important stone in a building. When constructing temples or any other buildings in ancient times, the cornerstone was literally at the corner and set not only the location, but also the direction of the building. Um, here is a picture of one. So you can see that that large stone at the bottom there is, um, is the cornerstone, chosen carefully. Nowadays, um, cornerstones have become more ceremonial and often appear further up in the structure with inscriptions and information about the building like this one. That one's built in, I think that says 1984. But in Bible times, the cornerstone was seriously important. It wasn't a ceremonial stone like this one, but a major part of the foundation of the building. It had to be right, strong, durable, and carefully chosen by the builders. So when Jesus talks about the cornerstone, he's not talking about this kind of memorials, this kind of um, pretty um, stone but something more significant, this kind of um, foundation, um, really important stone. And this should remind us of the importance of relying on Jesus as our cornerstone, not just a strong foundation, but the thing that determines our location and our direction. I love that this implies a sense of movement, that we are not static, that we are not like a building, but there is movement. We are on a journey and that journey should be based on Jesus, the cornerstone, giving stability and direction. You might see that as a personal message for your life as a Christian. 
or you might see it as a message for us as church. How you hear this message depends on your own circumstances, your involvement in church activities and so on. And to finish, I want to mention the part of the gospel that tells us about the tenants of the vineyard who don't want to give the produce to the owner, so much so that he eventually sends his son who is killed. And that should sound familiar because, as I said at the beginning, it's how Jesus links the story of the vineyard that we heard and the cornerstone reference, which is from Psalm 118. When Jesus is killed, it is a parallel to the cornerstone being rejected. Because of his death and rejection, he becomes that stable influence. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist it. Do you like my stable influence? God sent his son to die for us, to, for love of us, and he made him the one thing that can give us stability and direction. In these COVID times, we need that stability and direction and maybe a little humour. When all is disrupted in our lives and in our worship, what do we learn from that? What should our direction of travel be as individuals and as church? Where are we going and where is Jesus leading us? Disruption allows us to stop, pause, pray and review. So, a small pause in the homily and a time for a short prayer. As we pause, let's think about what our direction of travel should be as individuals and as church. So let's make sure we make the best use of this disruption to ensure that we are travelling in the right direction with Christ as our cornerstone. Amen. So we come to um, our hymn now. We're going to sing All Heaven Declares and you can now see the words on the screen. Um, so do join in. I hope you know it. You probably know it pretty well actually. I'm getting lots of lovely good hello messages. Hello, everyone who's joined during this. So, all heaven declares. All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare with the beauty of So you had that hymn at Nana's funeral. Oh, that's so lovely. So, 
we turn to our affirmation of um, our faith, helping us to share with others what we believe helps us also to remember what is at the core of our faith. So we affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we turn to our intercessions. If there is an intercession that you would like to share um, this morning, then please do uh, type it in. Remember, this is uh, a public space, um, but we are happy to pray. And if I don't spot them, I will keep looking just to check. But if I don't spot them, we will all pray them anyway. So please do. Um, and obviously you will have prayers that you might want to make quietly at home too. Um, just to say thank you very much to Paul Stanfield for preparing our intercessions for today, which I'm reading on his behalf. So we intercede for others. Lord, meet us in the stillness and hear our prayer. Our responses are, as usual, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you made our world to be like a vineyard and chose a people to be its tenants. May we who are now the workers in that vastly changed vineyard prove to be worthy of the work you trust us to do in Jesus' name. Mighty God, we pray for our church, that Christ may be the cornerstone of all that we do in his name. May we, his living church, be the solid blocks of a spiritual community which continues to hold fast in an ever secular world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, as we pray for our world, we especially pray for all who, like St Paul, have suffered the loss of all things for the sake of their faith in Jesus Christ. We raise before you organisations like the Barnabas Fund, which aids Christian living under persecution or in threatening environments with finance and prayers. We join our prayers with them as we ask for courage and strength for all persecuted Christians, their communities and churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for the joy of human love and for all those amongst whom we live and work. We pray particularly for loved ones who worry us with their health or circumstances or life direction. We pray for those among our friends and families who do not know you or whose faith has been shaken. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, friend of those in need, your son Jesus can free us from our burdens and heal our bodies and spirits. We pray for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. We pray too for those suffering from the coronavirus, and the health service struggling to cope with the pandemic and all those simply living in the fear of contracting it. So we take a moment to name those um, who need our prayers, need your prayers, Lord, in our hearts. We're asked to pray this morning for Valerie. So we pray for all of those for whom um, we know who are unwell at this time. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those whose hearts have been saddened by the death of someone close and dear to them. For members of our families who have died and whose anniversary we recall. Help us to experience the comfort of the Holy Spirit within us and the fellowship of the church family around us until we are reunited once more in your heavenly kingdom. And so we call to mind those who we want to pray for. And we pray for Leslie, whose husband, Jack, has died um, in the last two days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, as we move into the coming week to live and work for the gospel, help us to travel onwards with our eyes on the goal to that place where you are beckoning us onward to Jesus. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the joy of being able to share the words with you is that you can join with me in the collect for the day, which is on the screen. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself and so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So let's just keep a moment of quiet together. going to sing our, um, our other song this morning, Make Way, Make Way. Um, so I'm going to sing all of the little bits that I can. So you might just want to, if it's this two of you, you can do, one of you sing the first Make Way and the other one sing the one in brackets, but uh, it's just me. So I will sing it as if I am uh, everybody. But I am expecting to hear you in my head joining in. And I often do, which is fabulous. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor eyes. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your life. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. He comes the broken hearts to heal the prisoners to free. The deaf shall hear, the lame shall dance, the blind shall see. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. And those who mourn with heavy hearts, who weep and sigh, with laughter, joy, and royal crown, he'll beautify. 
sky. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. We call you now to worship him as Lord of all, to have no gods before him, the thrones must fall. Make way, make way, make way, make way for the King of Kings, for the King of Kings. Make way, make way, make way, make way, and let his kingdom in. It's a good hymn to finish on. So, faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Together we pray. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. And as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>